thank you very much for the introduction and thank you for inviting me here. Uh, my presentation today is based on results from the, a report written by Strand and colleagues in 19, uh, 2016. This one. And the Norwegian Institute of Bioeconomy Research was commissioned by the Department of Food and Agriculture to evaluate the effects of the large carnivores populations on Norwegian food industry based on national resources. The objective of this study was to describe the current status regarding conflicts between livestock and carnivores in Norway. Um, but um, in my presentation today, I will focus mainly on Norwegian sheep production, the effect of soil management, and the utilization of rangeland pastures. But first of all, I need to give you a brief overview of the Norwegian large carnivore policy. The Norwegian large carnivore policy has a two-folded goal to ensure viable carnivore population at the one hand and at the, uh, at the other hand, also to ensure an active farming with utilization of rangeland resources. Um, this uh, goal is based on a political consensus called the Carnivore Agreement of 2011. And uh, the method uh, used is a zoning management strategy where specific areas are prioritized for protected carnivores and others for livestock, grazing livestock. And uh, the government has put out management goals for each of the five protected carnivore species. And here, you see the numbers. Yeah. Uh, for lynx, uh, we have a goal of 65 annual reproductions. The status 2017 uh, was 55.5 reproductions and uh, individuals around 330. For Wolverine, the goal is 39, the status is 40, and around 324 individuals. For Wolf, four to six reproductions, of which three should be uh, fully Norwegian, and uh, the status is seven, where, uh, of which uh, four is fully Norwegian, and about 110 individuals. For Bears, the goal is uh, 13 reproductions, status is 6.9, and the numbers around 125. For a golden eagle, uh, we are uh, having a goal of uh, 850 to 1200 nesting pairs, and we are at the goal, and we do not uh, count uh, individuals that are not nesting. And then some facts about carnivore management zones and the utilization of rangeland pastures. The zones cover 55% of the Norwegian mainland, 30% of the sheep and 50% of the Sami reindeer grazing areas are found inside these zones. Utilization of the rangeland grazing capacity is 59% outside, but only 26% inside their zones. And there is least utilization of available grazing resources inside the zones for wolves, 12%, and for brown bears, uh, only 6%. And this figure shows the management zones, and these are put on top of each other uh, for all the four uh, large carnivores. And the map shows the number of carnivore species found in each area, and areas with no carnivore species, the gray ones, are prioritized for pasture. The lynx zone is the biggest. Uh, it's uh, 149,000 square kilometers. The wolf zone covers uh, 18,000 square kilometers, twice the size as Yellowstone National Park. And uh, we have, as I said, overlapping zones. And the darker the color here, the more carnivore species. Sheep, um, yeah, the most, uh, uh, we have most, uh, most difficulties around, uh, close to the Swedish border from uh, here and down here, especially in this region. And, uh, uh, sheep and reindeer farmers in the regions falling within zones of more than two carnivore species. At the same time, 
are most prone to livestock damages. And the situation is most severe in the very dark area here, uh, which uh, is about 9,000 square kilometers in Hedmark County, close to Sweden. Yeah. Yeah, a little about the farming system in Norway. Yeah, I'm sure you know, know it already. Um, but uh, we used to, to um, during the times where, uh, where we did not have very many uh, carnivores in Norway, we, the sheep grazing industry adapted to the free range, ranging system. So we used to let them out during summer on open field ranges. And uh, this, of course, uh, makes some troubles. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It is a fact that no other countries but Norway have that high losses of livestock caused by so few carnivore numbers. And the reason is, uh, of course, the free-ranging grazing system with sheep breeds that are roaming wildly. But this is also district policy. In Norway, we want people to live in the districts, and livestock farming and the utilization of rangeland resources is a key business in these areas. And uh, the livestock farming is important in Norway for Norwegian agriculture. Norway is located 48, no, 58 to 71 degrees north, and only 3% of the land is productive agricultural land. Uh, so we need to, to really use the outfields. So 300 million feed units from rangeland are grazed uh, yearly by livestock. More extensive use of rangeland pasture is encouraged by the government. And um, by now, only 40% of the Norwegian rangeland pasture capacity is utilized. So we should have more animals out in the rangelands. The number of livestock on rangeland is 2 million sheep, 250,000 cattle, 58,000 uh, goats, 8,800 horses, and 200,000 uh, reindeer. And of course, we have quite a lot of uh, losses every year. Uh, as uh, it was told uh, earlier th this morning, the Norwegian Nature Inspectorate, Statens Naturopsin, is documented the losses on range. And um, although they don't find uh, all of the losses, uh, only a fraction, 10%, uh, but this documentation is very good, actually. So we can count, uh, 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 we know around how many uh, animals that are killed by carnivores. And number of livestock compensated for are more than 18,000 sheep and more than 17,000 semi-domestic reindeer. Yeah. And uh, here we see the distribution of carnivore species in percent of total number of uh, sheep and sheep there and reindeer compensated for as being killed by protected carnivores. We can see here that most sheep are predated by, uh, depredated by wolverine and uh, lynx, whereas uh, most reindeer are depredated by wolverine, lynx, and also the golden eagle. The relative changes, uh, uh, first of all, this table shows the impacts of carnivores on sheep industry. And the relative changes in number of sheep are calculated as the differences between 2014 and 1999 in percent of total number of sheep in 1999. As we can see here, we have had a reduction of sheep number inside the zones whereas outside uh, it has been uh, an increase. And totally, the number in, of sheep in Norway has been fairly uh, stable. 
Inside the zone for bears, we have had a huge uh, uh, reduction in number of sheep. And uh, also for wolf, there has been a, a decrease. Um, but also, as we can see here, in the zones for more than two carnivore species, there has been a huge decrease of sheep. And now to border effects. The location of sheep carcasses could be used as an indicator of the range of the carnivores. And this table shows uh, sheep carcasses killed by large carnivores found within or outside the carnivore management zones for each of the damaging species. Um, yeah? Lynx is the only species for which a majority of the killings takes place inside the management zones. Oi! Yeah. And for all the others, uh, most of the killings uh, are found outside the zones. Uh, in the areas with highest carnivore pressure, the sheep farmers are closing down or mitigation measures that separate livestock and carnivores in time and space are implemented. Thus, losses caused by depredation in these areas are now being reduced. In areas with less carnivore pressures, uh, sheep farming is increasing, in the uh, and the traditional free summer grazing is still being practiced. So consequently, most of the sheep losses due to carnivores are found as a spillover effect. Uh, in the border areas, 30 to 50 kilometers outside the carnivore zones, which, yeah. So there is really a need for more effective mitigation measures uh, in the border areas around the management zones. This has to be focusing on, we have to focus on those zones much more now, the border zones. And just some few words about the mitigation measures. Uh, the most effective measures are those that separate carnivores and livestock in time and space, such as electric fencing, late release and early gathering, summer grazing at cultivated pastures. But these management, uh, measures limit the utilization of rangeland pasture resources because they reduce the number of days on rangeland pastures. So in our report, we suggested different efforts to reduce conflicts. Uh, we suggested uh, better documentation of reindeer losses. Uh, uh, we have to work for higher acceptance of mitigation measures, more effective mitigation measures in the border zone areas. Uh, we suggested uh, exclusion of lynx zones from the best alpine sheep grazing areas and the reindeer calving areas, more consistent management of carnivore zones, and compensations for not being able to use rangeland pastures. Um, we also suggested increased involvement of social sciences as a helpful measure. And so to the conclusion, total carnivore pressure on Norwegian sheep industry is linked to the size of the carnivore populations, combinations and the number of carnivore species at the same time and the distance to Sweden. Although the total production is maintained, the re-establishment of a large carnivores in Norway is a huge challenge for the most severely affected farmers and local communities. Reduced livestock grazing is, uh, in some areas, will lead to changes in the cultural landscape and probably loss of biodiversity over time and the legitimacy of the zoning strategy is disputed by many rural communities, escalating the political conflict of the entire carnivore conservation strategy. So we have some, some uh, problems or something to work on. But thank you for your attention.